Celebrate the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords. His name is Jesus. Hallelujah. At the count of three, I want us to shout the name Jesus. Are you ready, church? Are you sure you're ready? Who is the King of Kings? Who is the Lord of Lords? Who is the first and the last? Who is the Alpha and the Omega? Who is the beginning and the end? Can we shout the name Jesus? Hallelujah. Lift up your hands up towards the heavens. Shende baroshete baronde. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Rasate indele boho shaba. Thank you for the rain of your presence. Thank you for the glory. Thank you that the atmosphere is changed. Thank you for the glory that is present here with us. Thank you that you are the King of kings and the Lord of lords. We honor your presence. We are in awe. We thank you that this altar is on fire today. We tap into your presence. We receive what you have in store for us. Lift up your hands and just begin to decree and declare. Tell the Lord, Lord, I'm here today expecting an encounter from you. I don't know what you're looking or searching for today, but maybe you have walked in here desiring healing in your body. Tap in to tell, begin to tell the Lord, Lord, this is me today. I'm desiring healing. Maybe you're desiring deliverance, restoration, hallelujah, from addiction, from difficulty, from pain. Let this be your prayer today. Let this be the cry of your heart. Just begin to declare and decree and say to the Lord, Lord, this is me today. I want to be a candidate of an encounter. I want to be a candidate of a miracle today. I don't want to live here the same. I want to encounter you today. If this is you, let your heart be lifted up. Kurashike, Baronde, Lekabar. Hallelujah. In Luke chapter 1, verse 34, Mary said to the angel of the Lord, Hallelujah. How will this be? Mary asked the angels, Since I am a virgin, listen to what the angel of the Lord said to her. The angel answered, The Holy Spirit will come. Hallelujah. The Holy Spirit. Someone lift up your hands and say, Holy Spirit, come. Holy Spirit, come. It says, the Holy Spirit will come upon you, hallelujah, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you, so the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. Amen. Hallelujah. I'm praying over you right now that the Spirit of the Lord will begin to overshadow you. Amen. And Mary was facing hallelujah an impossible situation many of you have walked in here today you are facing an impossible situation a difficult situation amen but it took the spirit of the lord hallelujah to overshadow mary other translation says the spirit of the lord rested upon her the spirit of the lord Kurashike empowered her. Hallelujah. I see the Spirit of the Lord overshadowing many of you, and many of you have walked in here with impossible situation. But even right now, as the Spirit of the Lord is empowering you, right now, that situation, hallelujah, that is impossible. Someone say it's becoming possible. Oh, are you here with me? Are you here with me? Hallelujah. You have walked in here. Your situation is difficult. Your situation is painful. Your situation is impossible. But the Spirit of the Lord is able. Someone say is able. Say the Lord is able to deliver me. Say the Lord is able to rescue me. Say with me the Lord is able to restore me. Because the Spirit of the Lord has overshadowed me. Hallelujah. So the Spirit is able to overshadow you and what is impossible would become possible. Hallelujah. He's the Spirit of possibility. 
let may he overshadow you right now may he overshadow you right now may he shift you right now i see changes coming i see changes coming i see the lord lifting you out of a season out of an old season and bringing you into a new season someone shout shift someone shout change hallelujah shout change again change again shift is coming hallelujah lift up your hands and just thank the lord thank the lord that he's taking you out thank the lord that he has empowered you in the name of the lord jesus father we bless your holy name we thank you for your presence here with us we don't take it for granted hallelujah we thank you that you are here we sense your presence minister your grace don't stop don't let me hinder you in any way continue to flow and touch every heart that is present here today we don't want to leave the same we want to leave empowered by your word your word brings light let this word bring light in our hearts today if you believe it shout amen so you, you may take your seats and turn quickly to Deuteronomy chapter 1 verse 6 to 8 how many of you know that today is a very prophetic service hallelujah hallelujah today is a prophetic service amen many of you know those of you joining us by facebook maybe you were not here last week we announced that today we will be announcing to the church the new name that the lord god has given us oh come on you don't sound like you are a church that is excited amen why did i say that this is prophetic you know this sermon i'm preaching today i titled my sermon stuck in transition stuck in transition amen i pray over you that no one will be stuck in transition if god has taken you out of your old season how many of you know that we are stepping in someone do this with your foot i'm stepping into my new season amen your season of delay is over your season of disappointment is over oh as we were praying for you god said to me tell them in this month of april i will be delivering them from the spirit of delay i will be delivering them from the spirit of disappointment the lord also said to me tell them that in this month of april the fourth month god may have delayed right you remember when lazarus died right the bible tells us it jesus took four days to arrive to the funeral of Lazarus amen in the Jewish calendar after three days it is impossible for the dead to rise if there was any form of resurrection or if there is any way that the dead should rise amen it should be between those three days amen but Jesus allowed those three days to pass by how many of you know that he is the resurrection and he is the life amen he allowed those three days to what to pass by and he showed up on the fourth day only for them to know that he is the resurrection and he is the life amen they may have been in a season of delay but the lord jesus was able to raise what is dead in their life you may be in a season of delay i'm prophesying over someone who is in a season of delay who is walking in life disappointed i see the hand of the lord raising you out of that season of delay i see the hand of the lord shifting that tombstone and bringing lazarus out hallelujah your season in this month of april your season of delay your season of of disappointment is over shout amen shout a louder amen hallelujah the Lord also said something to me when I was praying for you he said to me tell them that in this month of April they will be stepping into the new season that I have for them hallelujah did you hear me let me try this side God will usher you in this month of April. You may have experienced delay. You may have been disappointed. Someone sitting on the upstairs, uh, on the overhead, uh, uh, on the overhead. You may have walked in here disappointed, experiencing delay. But God is saying to you that you are entering into your new season. Hallelujah hallelujah say God thank you for delivering me thank you for delivering me so I said to you today is a very prophetic service I'll tell you why 
Amen. How many of you want to know why? This sermon that the Lord laid on my heart two weeks ago, I wanted to preach it last week. I said to you last week that the name change, the announcement of the name change was not supposed to be today. Amen. It was not supposed to be, to be today. You can ask Pastor Isaac, Pastor Kingsley. The plan was to do it somewhere in May or in June. But just something out, something just kept pushing us to announce it on this day. Don't ask me why, but I believe it was the prompting of the Holy Ghost. Amen. For us to announce it today. So God laid this sermon on my heart two weeks ago. I wanted to preach it. Even as I was last week, I was pr uh, praying along and, and putting down the, the points that the Lord kept dropping into my, into my spirit. Right? And I thought, Lord, okay, I'm going to preach this sermon on Sunday. Then the Lord said to me, no, you do it next week. F Friday comes, the Lord said to us, you need to uh, hint the church about the, uh, the, the change of name. Amen. Then I said to the Lord, okay, right? Then this today, the Lord said to us, we are supposed to announce the name. This sermon that the Lord laid on my heart two weeks ago, little did I know, amen, are you with me? It's in line with what God is doing here among us in Elam International Family Church. Can you say amen? I'm going to shock you. Say, pastor, shock me. Say, what a shock. Say, pastor, I'm shocked hallelujah let me shock you small amen nobody likes to be shocked but today i will shock you more than small this morning just this morning me and pastor jinan we were talking and chatting as we were having breakfast and the lord brought something to light to us we were in awe of the lord how many of you have had that light bulb moment where the lord speaks to you and your jaw literally drops your heart literally drops and you're like lord wow this is what happened to us today let me tell you how the lord shocked us are you ready this day say this day six years ago this day april what 14th this sunday six years ago was the day we moved into this auditorium hallelujah hallelujah now tell me that this the hand of the lord is not upon this day it is not a coincidence amen in the realms of the spirit amen we have already crossed over but today someone say today we will be taking a physical step announcing the new name of the church hallelujah six years ago on this day we stepped into our promised land and on this day amen in 2024 how many of you know that he's a god of seasons and he's a god of time in daniel chapter 2 verse 21 daniel chapter 2 verse 21 he says and he changes the times and the seasons he removes kings and he raises up kings he gives wisdom to the wise and knowledge to those who have understanding and in psalms 74 verse 16 to 17 it says the day is yours hallelujah it's his someone say the day is his the night also is yours you have prepared the light and the sun you have set all the borders you have set all the borders of the earth you have made the summer and you have made the winter hallelujah he is a god of the season he is a god of season and he has set this time this day this day has been ordained Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lift up your hands. Say, Lord, let me not miss out on what you have for me in this new season. Hallelujah. Say with me, Lord, don't let me miss out. We are entering already in the realms of the Spirit. 
amen we have crossed over but today we are taking a physical step to move into the new season into the new dimension that God has for us but we want to make sure that we will not be a, a generation amen the Israelites that left the promised land the Bible tells us only two entered the promised land we don't want to be a generation that will miss out amen we don't want to be a generation that will miss out on what God is doing turn with me quickly to Deuteronomy chapter 1 verse 6 to 8 hallelujah how many of you are excited to be in the house of the Lord hallelujah Deuteronomy chapter 1 verse 6 to 8 this is where the Israelites God had delivered them out of Egypt God had brought them out of the old season, amen. He had a new season for them. Just like us today, we have a new season that God is driving us into. But like the Israelites, we don't want to be a generation that is stuck between two seasons. Amen. The old is gone. The new has come the old is gone the new has come i say it again the old is gone the new has come someone shout amen the lord our god has spoke to us in horeb saying you have dwelled long enough at this mountain turn and take your journey and go to the mountains of the Amorites to all the neighboring places in the plain in the mountains and in the lowland in the south hallelujah and on the sea coast to the land of the Canaanites and to Lebanon someone say God bless Lebanon hallelujah God bless Lebanon to the land of the Canaanites to Lebanon as far as the great river Euphrates see someone say with me see I have set the land before you I read this again amen a new season right God has taken you out of the old season and God was literally saying to the Israelites I brought you out of Egypt but now you are stuck in transition amen God delivered you there is a new season but you have not yet put your foot into this new season why it's because you are stuck in transition and that is where the Israelites found themselves that generation of the Israelites found themselves stuck at Mount Horeb amen but God comes to them to say to them literally that you have been moving around this mountain for too long it's time to keep moving amen literally he said to them I have delivered you out of Egypt there is a land that I have ordained for you, a promised land that I want you to enter into. But, right, but you are stuck at Mount Horeb. All you've been doing is moving around that mountain. But it's your season. Someone say it's my season. To move into the promised land that God has ordained for me. If you believe it, say amen. He says, see, I have set a land before you. Go in hallelujah amen God delivered you out of Egypt but now it's time to go into the new season that God has for you and possess the land which the Lord swore to your fathers to Abraham to Isaac to Jacob to give to them and their descendants after them can you say amen hallelujah stuck in transition what is transition transition is the process of moving from one place or from one season to another amen we can never escape transition right if God has delivered you out of an old season you would not immediately 
move into a new season, right? There is a process. The process of moving, listen to me carefully, from an old season into a new season. He's a God of seasons, right? You may be in winter today, but get ready. Summer is coming. Hallelujah. We hate the winter. Now you see the weather is cold. You see Ghanaians all with their jackets and with their sweaters. We hate the winter. Amen. When it rains a bit, we hate the winter, right? But he's a God of seasons. You may be in winter right now. Hallelujah. But get ready. God will drive you into a season of summer. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And this is what God was literally saying to the Israelites. I've delivered you out of Egypt. Amen. But you have not yet entered into the promised land. And they found themselves stuck between two seasons. Amen. My wife would say sometimes, we, I don't know about you, if you love traveling, we are not the kind that love uh, to travel, right? Especially when we think of long, long flights. We are not the kind that gets so excited of sitting in the plane for seven or eight hours, right? We don't like it. My wife would always say, I wish there was just a button that I can press, right? You enter into this place, you press the button and you're in the States. Hallelujah. Amen. Someone say praise the Lord. We just wish, right? We just wish that it could just happen like immediately, right? You ask a pregnant woman when the conception happens, right? She doesn't just wake up the next day and the baby is out. There is always a transition period from the time of conception till the baby is born. And we can never, hallelujah, we can never escape the season of transition. Are you with me? God delivered them out of Egypt. They did not enter into the promised land overnight. It took time. Amen. We hate a transition, amen. But you may be in transition today. It's a good place as long as you are not stuck. Are you with me? As long as you are not stuck in transition, as long as you are not like that generation that moved around uh, at the mountain, amen. As long as you keep moving forward into the promised land, you are heading into the direction that God has in store for you. Can you say amen? amen? Hallelujah. Nobody loves transition. Amen. You see a pregnant woman, all the changes that she goes through, right? She puts on weight. Amen. You see all the changes. And even when the baby is about to be born, you ask a pregnant woman, the pain that, that she would generally go through before that baby is what? Is born. Right? Hallelujah. Nobody likes it. Transition. It's a fact about transition. Transition is difficult. Are you with me? Put it down. If you are in transition today and you are experiencing some difficulty, it's okay. It's normal. Are you with me? There is a wilderness in every transition. Hallelujah. God has brought you out of Egypt, but today you find yourself in transition. You are experiencing a Red Sea. You are experiencing a desert. You are experiencing a Jordan River. You are standing before the walls of Jericho, right? It's where all of these things are happening to you were in the transition. Hallelujah. Transition is, it's a fact about transition transition there is a, a place of difficulty there is a place of pain in transition amen if you are experiencing difficulty you are experiencing pain it could be that you are in transition you are moving you are on the journey into a new season can you shout aloud that amen? amen hallelujah it's not because you are under a curse Amen. It's because you are in transition about to enter into your promised land. So you will experience Red Seas. Hallelujah. You will experience Jordan Rivers. You will experience walls of Jericho. But don't let any difficulty, difficulty to keep you stuck 
in the wilderness. Amen. Hallelujah. You ask Joseph. Ask Joseph. When you get to heaven, ask Joseph. From the time he received the promise of God. Amen. That he was going to be the ruler over Egypt, right? How many of you know what he went through? He was cast into a pit. He was sold as a slave. He spent time in prison right before he became a ruler over Egypt. Amen. Many times when God anoints us, we want to move straight. Amen. We don't want to go through the disappointment before we are appointed. Are you with me? Let me say this again. In the life of every believer, there is a season where God will anoint you. Amen. And there is a season of disappointment. And also there is a season of appointment. In the life of every believer, God will never move you from anointing to appointment. Are you with me? Can you say amen? Let me say this again. God will never move you from anointing to appointment. He will take you through the disappointment before He drives you and He appoints you. You ask Joseph, you ask David. Everything that David went through from the time that Samuel anointed him, that he was going to become king, everything that he went through with Saul, right? He could have remained stuck, right? Joseph could have remained stuck in, in prison. He could, have, he could have remained stuck in, in, in slavery. But none of them, not, J, not, not David, not, not, not uh, Joseph, none of them allowed themselves to remain stuck. Are you with me? Put it down. Put it down. This would help you. This would be revelation to your spirit. Transition is always difficult. Transition is also very long. Amen. We wish it was like popcorn. You just put it in the microwave and within a minute, you're sitting down watching a movie and enjoying the butter flavored popcorn. Amen. How many of you wish it was like this? Amen. You wish you could just press a button and it's done. You wish you could just press a button and you move into your, into, into your seizing of appointment. Are you with me? Can you say amen? We wish we could just press a button and now, right now, enter into a seizing of appointment. But transition can be long. The Bible tells us that from the time Abraham received the promise, he was 25 years old when he received the promise of God. 75 years old, sorry. Amen. But it took how many years? 25 years for Abraham to see the promise of God come to pass in his life. How many of you know that transition is long? Amen. Transition is long. The Bible tells us in Numbers chapter 32 verse 13, it says, So the Lord's anger was aroused against Israel and he made them wander in the wilderness 40 years until all the generation that had done evil in the sight of the Lord was gone. Amen. How many years did the Israelites spend in transition? Amen. 40 years, right? How many years did Abraham wait for the promise of God to be fulfilled? 25 years. So not only is transition difficult, but transition is long. Some of you are in long waiting seasons long transition but I'm here to encourage you the voice of the Spirit for you today hallelujah don't remain stuck no matter how long no matter how difficult transition is some of you are saying pastor ah, this one dear you lie are you sure God will come true are you sure eight years I've waited Ten years I've been waiting on the Lord. Are you sure that God can come true for me? Are you sure that God will take me into my new season? Put down number three. 
transition is godly. What do I mean by transition is godly? That means the God who took you out of Egypt is the same God who will be with you in transition and will see you into the promised land. Amen. It may be long, 10 years of waiting. It may be difficult. You are experiencing some wilderness today, some pain, some difficulty. But the God who delivered you out of Egypt is the same God who's with you in transition and He will see you to enter into your promised land. Can you say amen? The Bible tells us in Deuteronomy chapter 31 verse 8, it says, And the Lord, He is the one who goes before you. This was said about God in transition. When God was taking the Israelites out of Egypt, He had taken, when they were in transition, when they were going through the wilderness, this was said about the God that we serve. Amen. I'm here to encourage someone. You may be in long waiting seasons, right? In long transition. But it's important that you know and you understand. And I pray for you that this would be revelation to you today that the God who brought you out of Egypt is the same God who would see you through this transition you may be standing before the Red Sea all the walls of Jericho but the God who brought you out of Egypt in this season of transition God will see you through into the promised land can you say amen the wilderness may be difficult. The wilderness may be, may be painful. The Red Sea may be wide. The walls of Jericho may be wide and long and big. But God, who delivered you out of Egypt, can bring you into your promised land. Can you say amen? amen. Say we are crossing over. Oh, we are taking hold of what God has in store for us. Oh, you don't sound like a generation that believes that God is with them in transition. God will see you true. Yeah. Hallelujah. God will see you true. Your season of transition. Hallelujah. Someone praise the Lord with me. Praise the Lord. It says in the Lord, He is the one who goes before you. He will be with you. He will not leave you nor forsake you. Do not fear. Do not be this made. Amen. Read this out. Let this word encourage you today. The Lord, Lord, you said you will go before me. To the Israelites, you were the cloud by day. You were the fire by night. You parted the Red Sea. You fed us in the wilderness. Hallelujah. You brought down the walls of Jericho. Today, Lord, I know that you have gone before me. You will be with me. You will not leave me. Neither will you forsake me. So for that reason, I choose today to fear not. To fear not. The Lord just spoke to me. He said to me, some of you are afraid of the future. You don't know, you are uncertain, but you are afraid of what lies ahead. I'm here to encourage someone. Amen. God is saying to you, don't be afraid. I am with you and I am, he's the God of yesterday. He's the God of today. He's the God of tomorrow. Hallelujah. If he was with you yesterday and he's with you now, he's also with you in the future. Can someone shout amen? Hallelujah. He's already gone ahead of you into the future to pave the way for you. Hallelujah. Every enemy that has gone before you to set a trap for you to fall in, let that enemy fall in it himself in the name of Jesus. Let God remove every trap in your path. Amen. So that as you sail, you will sail into your promised land. And no plan of the enemy or agenda from the pit of hell shall prosper against you. If you believe it, shout amen. amen. In Genesis chapter 39, verse 2 to 3, it says, and this is about Joseph, right? This is about Joseph. Everything that Joseph went through. 
Listen to the word of the Lord. It says, the Lord was with Joseph. Amen. In transition, the Lord is with you. Transition may be long. It may be difficult. But remember this truth about the God that we serve. He's with you always. Hallelujah. He will never leave you. Neither will he forsake you. He said to Joshua when Joshua was about to step into the, the shoes of Moses. He said to Joshua these same words. As I was with Moses, so I will be with you. I was with Moses for 40 years in the wilderness. Amen. So I will be with you in the promised land. Hallelujah. In the promised land, I will also be with you. Hallelujah. We don't want to remain stuck into the, in the promised land. We want to step into the place that God, the promised land that God has in store for us. Put down some principles that would help you. These principles that the Lord laid on my heart and I believe these principles would help you. Will bring deliverance to you today. So that you would rise up from this place where you are stuck and begin to march again into your promised land if you believe it say amen. amen say with me in transition i should never look back hallelujah this will bring you freedom this is revelation to you let me tell you something some of you are prisoners of your past some of you are in bondage to your past the chains of your past are holding you Amen. And I've been a victim of things that I've been through in the past that have held me down and have affected me from making progress into the season that God has for me. And it's the same for many that have walked in here today. Many of you have been through some things in the past, some pain in the past, some difficulty in the past right some disappointed some disappointment people have offended you people have hurt you in the past amen but today i want us to choose to let go of the things of the past and shake them off so that we can move into the future can you say amen, amen. hallelujah a lot of the times and i told you i've been i'm a victim of it some of you have been through genuine pain. We've been through things in the past. And we've realized how these things from the past can hold us down. Amen. And if we are not careful, if we don't open our hearts today and say, Lord, only you can heal and only you can restore my heart until we are able to open our hearts and say holy spirit i welcome you in go in and begin that healing until we get to that place where we allow the spirit of the lord to go in only god can heal and restore your heart are you with me have you been through disappointment amen have you have someone offended you have someone hurt you but it's time just as when Jesus gave that command to Mary and Martha to push that stone it's time hallelujah it's time to push that stone and allow the Lord to command Lazarus to come out of that tomb amen hallelujah hallelujah when you when you choose today God wants to drive you. God, he's a forward-looking God. He's a God of progress. But as long as we allow the past, the chains of the past to hold us down, we can never move into the future and the season that God has for us. If you believe it, say amen. God has new heights. He has new levels for you. Amen. But as long as you keep looking back, the Bible says that he who sets his hand to the plow should never look back. My question to you today is are you looking back? The enemy
enemy loves to remind us of our past, right? Because as long as he keeps reminding us, and as long as we keep allowing him, amen, then he will keep, he would use the past to keep us in bondage. Lift up your hands and say, Holy Spirit, come and heal my heart from the pain of the past. Heal my heart. Some of you have experienced broken hearts, but we don't want this to uh, affect us from going into the season that God has for us. And only God can heal your heart. Only Jesus can go in and heal your heart. Amen. Lord, deliver us from the pain of the past. Deliver us from the chains of the past. Let every chain of the past, let God release you from it now. In the name of Jesus. God is releasing grace right now to deliver you and set you free from the chains of your past. Can you believe it? Can you believe with me? Can you say amen? amen. Stop looking. Many times we look at the future. We look at the future through the lens of our past. We're not able to see what God has for us. We're not able to see the promised land. Why? Because we have the lens of our past on. Every time God is saying come, we're looking back. Why? Because we have the lens of our past on. May God deliver you today. If you are a candidate of deliverance, shout a louder amen. amen. Hallelujah. In transition, not only does God not require me to look at the past, but in transition, we should never camp. Let me explain this. Transition is not home. Look to someone next to you and say to them, transition is not home. It's never God's intention that transition becomes destination. Oh, did you hear me? It's never part of God's plan that transition becomes destination. God has delivered you out of Egypt. You're in transition, but you have not yet arrived home. Home is where? Is the promised land. As long as you have not arrived into your new season, don't camp in transition. Hallelujah. That's what the Israelites did after their deliverance. They camped at Mount Horeb. And the Lord literally comes to them. You've been going around this mountain for too long. I never intended this mountain or this place of Horeb to be home. It's not home. I have a land for you. I want you to keep marching forward and possess this promised land, this new season that I have for you. Can you shout amen? Hallelujah. Never camp when you are in transition. No matter how long, no matter how difficult it is. If you're standing before the Red Sea, don't camp. If you are in the desert or the wilderness, don't what? Don't camp. If you're standing before the Jordan River or the wall of Jericho, don't what? Don't camp. Keep doing what? Keep moving forward say i'm moving forward don't camp don't look back and don't do what don't camp and number three don't complain hallelujah look to each other say to them stop complaining stop complaining i know men are, 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 are saying pastor this is, is revelation. My wife complains. Today you are speaking truth. Today you are speaking truth. And I'm sure men are looking at their wives and they are saying, Did you hear what Pastor just said? Stop complaining. This is not a word for only women. It's for all of you. Some of you men, God is blessing you, but you are always complaining. Amen. Your pockets are full, but you are always complaining. God has given you a promotion, but you are always complaining. God has been merciful. He has been faithful to you, but you are always doing what? 
complaining amen you are driving a nice car married to a beautiful wife but all you do is do what you complain when you sit you do what you complain when you're watching TV you do what you complain when you're driving you're looking around to do what to complain when you come to church what do you do you complain when you go around looking for your pastor what do you want to do you want to complain Today we are changing your name. Hallelujah. We're stripping you off of that garment of complaint. And as the word of the Lord says, put on the, 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 what? the, the garment of praise. Someone needs to take off that garment of complaint and put on the garment of praise. If you know that God is faithful, amen. If you know that God is merciful, if you know that God has been through, with you through every season, he's brought you out of every season, amen. How about we begin to praise Him? Hallelujah. Praise, 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 praise. Be thankful. Sometimes we don't know that when we complain, we're giving the enemy access to our lives. We're giving him access. We're saying, devil, come in and have your way. When we praise God, you know what we do? We close the gates. You know, we, we pray, Father, we, 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 we're always fighting against the gates, pulling down the walls, amen. But then after we go and we complain, you know what that, what, what, what that does? It opens the gates for the enemy to come in. Hallelujah. Are you with me? Can you say amen? amen. Someone shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Yes. When we complain, we give the enemy a footstool in our life. We're saying, devil, come in and have your way. Maybe you're ignorant. Maybe you're not aware. But I pray that this will be a light in your heart today. That every time you want to open your mouth to complain, that the Spirit of the Lord will convict you in your heart. And you say to yourself, no, I have no right to complain. Amen. You may not be married, but don't complain. You may be struggling in your marriage, but don't complain. Your pockets may be empty, but don't complain. Right? Hallelujah. Don't do what? Don't complain. The Bible says in 1 Thessalonians 5, 16 to 18, it says, Rejoice always, pray continually, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus this is his will for you you want to know the will of God for your life today many of you have walked in here wondering God what is your will for me today let me tell you give thanks did you hear me give thanks did you hear me give thanks let the season change if you want to move from a place of being stuck amen you need to choose comp uh, praise or you need to choose gratitude. Amen. You know what I just see? I see you as you begin to show gratitude to God in your season of transition. What is that? That plane that you can, like a drone, drone. Amen. I see you coming out of your season. I see you rising above your season you know those little fans or those little wings around the drone right sometimes they have like six or seven wings when you begin to spark them up with 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 thanksgiving and gratitude the first one comes on begins to move second third fourth fifth sixth before you realize right it took a gratitude to cause you to rise up above your situation today if you believe it shout amen. amen hallelujah this is what thanksgiving is able to do when you when you are ungrateful you give room to the enemy the enemy will keep you in bondage but when you are thankful do you know who you give room to work in your life you give the lord uh, 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 the opportunity to work in your life god is looking for the opportunity to come in he's looking for the opportunity to work in your life but as long as you keep complaining you will keep the doors of your heart shut 
but if you choose gratitude gratitude you open your heart to God you begin seeing God bringing you out of that season of difficulty bringing you out of that season of impossibility right into a season into a new season a fresh season can you say amen hallelujah stop complaining it's dangerous the Israelites always complained they were a generation that were known may you never be a generation that is known for complaining not Elam International Family Church you know I almost said the new name of the church some of you are not you are praying that pastor I pray that pastor will slip it out some of you tried it during the week even yesterday someone said pastor you know just tell me the name I said no way I will not tell you the name hallelujah stop complaining you will receive deliverance today amen you will begin to march forward today you can't march forward if you keep complaining the longer you complain the deeper your feet will go in the deeper your roots will go in but as you choose gratitude I see the Lord picking you out amen of that season of transition and casting you into say I'm crossing over he's helping you to cross over into your new season if you believe it shout amen so what is God doing in transition? We're almost done. What is God doing in transition? Put it down. Number one, humility. Humility. Sometimes the transition is long. The transition is, is difficult. But humility, God is producing something on the inside of you. You never come out of transition the same. You always come out better amen it's the season where God is separating the wheat from the chaff humility the Bible says he sets himself against the proud but he does what he lifts up the humble if your transition is long if your transition is difficult know that you are in a season where God is producing some humility in you because pride God is not attracted to pride. Amen. But when he sees humility, your first year in, 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 in transition, the pride is, God is like, no, right? Second year of waiting and in transition, God is saying, okay, now I can, the pride is gone. Third year, fourth year, five years, right? Literally, God is like, has stripped you off of this pride. Now he says, come, let's walk together. Amen. It says he sets himself against the proud, but he gives what? He gives grace to the humble. Hallelujah. You know that we say metamorphosis, right? Where the animal or the insect will shed leaves or the old leaves. Amen. The old wine and skins. That is what is happening. Sometimes you have to face the Red Sea you have to go through the desert right and face the Jordan River for God to to, to literally uh, 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 sift you off the old wine skin so that he can begin to pour new wine on the inside of you hallelujah some of you I tell you it has taken this transition period for God to humble you are you with me I know you say I don't want to pray for a longer transition period right I sometimes I think the longer the transition sometimes is because we are not yet ready to enter the promised land how many of you know that you can enter the promised land and instead of flourishing you will what you will perish amen you want to enter into your new season father take me take me into the new season but God is saying my son my daughter you are not ready for the new season if you go into this new season you will perish take time don't be in a hurry humility when you enter into that new season humble i tell you you will flourish in the promises of god number two what is god doing in transition he's building hallelujah he's building someone say building first peter 5 verse 10 it says and the God of all grace who called you to his eternal glory in Christ after you have suffered a little while will himself restore you and make you what strong someone say with me strong 
firm and steadfast but this comes when what when you have suffered for a little while are you with me how many of you know that it's in transition where your faith is being purified amen where God is building you up where strength is being built where you are becoming more steadfast it's where it's in transition say with me number one in transition I'm experiencing humility God is building me up and I end with this in transition you are experiencing revelation Hura baba sheke hallelujah Hura bakura baba shike baroko boshanda may your eyes be open today may your may the eyes of your understanding be open May every blindfold over your eyes, over the eyes of your heart, may the Lord remove those blindfolds now in the name of Jesus. May you begin to see. May God open your eyes, give you understanding. May He enlighten the eyes of your heart so that you can see what God is doing in this season of transition. One thing I know, that in the time of difficulty, he was the, the cloud by day and the fire by night. It's in the time of difficulty. How many of you know that it's those times that God speaks to us the most? Oh, I felt like that was only for me. Did you hear me? How many of you know that in times of difficulty, it's the time you're, all on, your, you're on your knees praying. It's in the time of difficulty. Eli is it Elijah that heard the, 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 st the, the small, the still small voice of the Lord, right? He heard him when he was where? In the wilderness. And it's in the wilderness that we will hear the voice of God. If you are going through a season that is long, that is difficult, remember in this season, God is not only building, building you up, and, and, and transforming your heart. But in the season, God wants to speak to you. Amen. The difficult seasons are the times. It's like it's the time that we hear God the most. You try it. Amen. Sometimes we feel like when we are in long waiting seasons, we begin to wonder, God, where are you? It's like Job. He says, I went to the north, went to the west, the east. Where are you? Amen. But if we sit and choose in the season of transition to seek the, the heart of the Lord, some of you would receive revelation that you have never, never heard or experienced from the Lord. Amen. So humble, allow the Lord to humble you. Allow the Lord to build you up and choose today in this time of transition. Lord, I choose to spend time with you. And I tell you, it's in this season that ears are being opened. It's in this season that eyes are being opened for deep revelation. Some of you will, God will open your eyes to the different dimensions of his spirit. It will take you being in transition. Do you believe this? Do you believe this? Can you say amen? Can you say a louder amen? hallelujah and we don't want to make sure that's why the Lord laid these principles on my heart amen and I've said this before from the pulpit I said that God's word is full of promises but God lays out principles for us to live by when we apply these principles in our lives we will see the promises of God fulfilled in us and I believe this these principles will deliver you from being stuck today if you stop looking back Amen. How many of you know what number two is? If you stop looking back, what's number two? If you choose not to camp and if you choose not to complain. Do you believe this? Oh, have you already forgotten? Are you sure? Okay, let's give the Lord a clap offering. And I pray that this seed that has been sown today would fall in your heart and go deeper into you. Can you say amen?